It's an honor to be up here with you guys, man. I'm, no. I tune into the show all the time, so I'm extremely humbled to be up here before you guys. I appreciate you uh, joining us, and I know we've all been here three years running. This is your first trip. It's kind of like overwhelming, isn't it? It really is. There's so many cool things out here. I just saw like the largest TV in the world here. It's, it's insane. So much cool things here. And you were on a panel this morning. Uh, we got a piece of tape to show you from uh, what we call the Sports Business Innovation, uh, a series of panels talking about uh, technology, where it's going from here, the uh, state of the art in sports. And here's a sample. I look at my childhood and some of the magical things that I got going out in the street and playing all day long and how wonderful that was and how developmental that was for me. That's gone. Like, I hope my kids get some of that, but the reality is that's just not the way the world works. They're programmed, you know, their their sports are programmed, their pursuits are programmed, their play dates are programmed. Like, everything is fit into this world, and the way they consume content has also changed and is never going back. I think it's huge for women's sports and niche sports where we don't get a ton of TV time, so now we have the ability to share our story, keep fans engaged, um, grow the fan base through that social media. So it's huge for us to use our platforms that way. I think we have to understand where we are in technology today. Everybody wants to be in that locker room. Everybody wants to have that first-hand experience. Everyone wants to feel like an athlete. And what better way to do it than put cameras in the locker room, than to follow these athletes, than to you know, put a camera on these athletes and see what they see. And I think it's, I think it's cool. I think if VR can get to the point where you can sit at home and be behind the lens of an Eli Manning or a Tom Brady from your couch and see what they see, it'll be next level. And that's truly really the thing, Victor, when we talk about the way we all grew up watching sports and we see the way it's presented now and all the different platforms and the ways you can watch games, it, it makes you say, boy, five years from now, how are we going to be consuming all this sports out here? It's pretty amazing stuff. And from an athlete's standpoint, from your standpoint, um, how do you view that? Um, I, I think it's amazing. I think it's obviously different than the traditional ways that we've watched it. And it's time, you know, with the, with the way technology is turning, it's time to turn the page and find new ways to watch games, find different avenues and different ways to watch these games. And I think VR is at the forefront of that. Virtual reality is at the, is at the forefront of that. And um, being able to, like I said, be at home and feel like you're at the game or feel like you're in the locker room after a win, the fans want to see that. They want to be a part of that. They want to understand what that feels like or what that looks like aside from just a short clip from a, you know, from a sports channel. You know, it's just amazing to me that, you know, especially for us growing up, remember how we used to try to rush home to, to you know, get to see our favorite game? Now you can just click on your iPad. You wherever you phone, are. Wherever you are. You can watch whatever you live stream, whatever you want. Very amazing. Yeah, I think the consumption of inf inf information and is better. However, it's also smaller because they're consuming it, and the consumers are consuming it in shorter spaces. So sometimes, and what we're seeing a lot now, especially I'm seeing in basketball, is the understanding of how that happened and why teams win. So sometimes those short 15-second, 30-second clips do not show what really happened in the basketball game or the football game or whatever, and even in life. And so I think the consumption of the microwave, you know, there is something about baking that tastes a little better sometimes too. I will tell you this, Ernie, you know, I'm not a big technology guy, but I think technology has really helped me a lot as I start getting ready for March Madness uh, because there's no way we can watch 100 teams play. Like, I've watched every NBA team probably play a minimum of five or six times so you know how good they're going to be, their ceiling and things like that. But now I just started this week getting ready for March Madness. And the technology, I will admit, trying to find out about Davidson, uh, somebody like that. I mean, because I'm not going to – they're not going to show Davidson. No disrespect to Davidson, but they're not going to show them on television. But starting my prep for March Madness, it, it has been very helpful to me. Hey, Victor, we talk about um, the way athletes have become more accessible to their fans. Uh, and you've seen that in the course of your career, how, how especially in something like Twitter, uh, fans feel like they know you here. What's the next step? Are we ever going to see somebody allowed to tweet during a game? Would you, if you're on the sidelines, mm -hmm. would you ever want to do that? 
Um, probably not, because it, it would probably take away from the focus of the actual game. How about and, somebody who's and not active that day, okay. but is on the bench? You better not be tweeting nothing out if he's not active. <laughs> you need to worry about how he's going to get on that field, not, not be inactive. But I think a lot of the times if, if guys were able to tweet or have their social media during games, it'll be, a lot, it'll, it'll be emotional. It'll be emotional tweets. It'll probably be, you know, dang, I should have caught that or I wish I didn't drop that. Or just negative um, mostly. Or it could be, man, I just caught a great touchdown. Can't yeah, wait would, for you guys to see not, it. it could would be fans both. not enjoy that? Or it could well, be both. It's, sen- it's sensationalism to, to the exactly. match because the way you feel in the moment isn't actually what's going on all the time. And so because I get in a tussle with Victor, I might feel a way about him in that moment. But that's not really how I feel about him because I might know him or I know how the competitive nature is. So, yes, if you want sensationalism, it will be fun to see people yeah, tweet but, in the middle of a game. But, a but if you want realism, <laughs> that's not real life. But, well, they've tried it in the Pro Bowl, I feel like, last year. They let them tweet and they let them take Instagram photos and things like that. And the Pro Bowl is different because it's just fun. Guys are out there having a good time. But, but it's a very slippery slope, Ernie, because obviously, you know, I'm anti-social media. I know that. But you got to understand, uh, you think about this, though. Somebody's going to say something to you in the heat of, of a game. That, and the bad thing about being famous or in the limelight People can say whatever they want to say to you, but when you respond to them, that what becomes the news. That's the diff- the dangers about why I do no social media because these people feel like they can say anything to you, and if you say something to them, it becomes worldwide in a minute, and that's yeah. not fair. You can catch uh, Victor Cruz on the undefeated, and um, I mean, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you at this point, being a Super Bowl champion. Yeah. Who is going to win the Super Bowl this year? <laughs> First of all, he can't pick certain teams, Ernie. Why? Why? He can't get up here and pick the New England Patriots. They'll kill him back in New York. <laughs> this is true. Although, I am picking the New England Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's all good. But we beat them twice in the Super Bowl, so I don't... That, that's the win I'm worried about right there. Uh, Charles Barkley taking a DNA test to see how his mind works. It's going to come back negative. You know what? I'm not even going to let him say anything about his mama because that has been funny. Yeah. That was a good Kelly, one. Kelly, that was funny, Kelly. <laughs>